We see folks dying from preventable disease because their race, their gender, their immigration status creates discriminatory conditions that ultimately affect their health. The goal is to really ensure the right to health for all individuals who demand it and need it and is a fundamental human right that they have it. Having access to a department like ours where people are actively doing that research and pushing for that change at the highest levels of government is absolutely critical to improving the health status of people everywhere. Many of our faculty are our frontline physicians who run adolescent clinics and work in the emergency room, really driving the research agendas in those areas. It's also comprised of people who are in the world in humanitarian emergencies, severe effects of climate change, war, instability. We see ourselves as partnering with the community to make change and improve health outcomes. I've been treating COVID patients since March here in New York City in a hospital during the surge. I saw the worst of it. COVID has shined a light on disparities that have long existed in populations like the black population here in New York City that was twice as likely to die from COVID than other populations. I'm particularly focused on how uh, refugees and migrant populations are able to access healthcare in places where you have the right to access uh, healthcare, testing has been able to access these marginalized groups much more effectively uh, than in places where they are driven underground and where they're reluctant to come forward. The COVID-19 Migration Hub is a place where we hope practitioners will be able to come um, as well as advocacy groups, refugee groups themselves who want to understand uh, the state of the scholarship when it comes to COVID-19. During the early days of the pandemic, access to healthcare, and particularly sexual and reproductive healthcare, closed, increasing the health disparities for our populations. Many infections have gone untreated. Pregnancies may not have been averted. It may have sort of changed the health trajectory of our adolescents. The ability to access kind of comprehensive sexual and reproductive health is a lifesaver and unfortunately it's extremely uneven so we try every way possible to try to improve the outcomes around sexual and reproductive health. Title X is the uh, only national funding source for family planning and is funded annually by Congress. And due to a recent ruling, what's known as the domestic gag rule, was put in place which forced sites that receive Title X funding essentially to not be able to discuss with women abortion. Our overall objective is to document and mitigate the impacts of a series of policy decisions that have resulted in a reduction of access to sexual and reproductive health care. Our goal is to provide research and analysis that really reduces harm and informs the advocacy objectives of our partners. The AMDD, Averting Maternal Death and Disability Program, is now both global, but also right here in the United States. The United States is one of only two or three countries in the entire world where the maternal mortality rate is actually going up. We have worked on expanding um, the availability, the access, the quality, and the use of emergency obstetric care. My area of expertise is working with adolescent and young adult males. And from a public health perspective, they are usually left out of the equation. We are engaging in research that highlights the importance of engaging young men across the globe in healthcare, but also in understanding the concept of male responsibility for pregnancy prevention, as well as uh, their sexual and reproductive health. We have a program in the department called Global Health Justice and Governance. What we do in that program is we bring together science people, lawyers, government people who do the regulations, and we try to get some consensus on how we can move forward. The kind of multidisciplinary approach that is quite practical um, is something unique about this program. We've known for a really long time that there's been a kind of disproportionate placement of industry that really pollutes in either poor or communities of color. Migrant workers, agricultural laborers, 
and farmers uh, are exposed occupationally um, to a whole range of toxic chemicals. The island of Kauai is the location for many agrochemical company test fields. I was um, particularly honored to be able to sit with Governor Iggy and to have him understand the weight of the science and to sign a bill banning chlorpyrifos uh, in the state of Hawaii. The department has never been more robust and our students have never been more enthusiastic. We'd like to see justice. We think every human being should have access to decent health care. We want to see an end to all this politicization of what should be a basic human right.